Financial Planner, Flow on YouTube. Economic crisis indicators are off the charts. Has the date for the collapse been decided? Let's get into the economic collapse financial news. Now, as we've been tracking the economy here in the United States and the global economy, we've been tracking other countries and how they're doing. We've noticed certain patterns and we notice that we're seeing the same type of indicators that we've seen in the past. Now, when we look at initial jobless claims, we can see that this has continually been dropping over time. And when we look at continuing claims, we can see now that we're at the point as where we were back in 1974. But what we've noticed over the time period from 1974 moving forward, every time the initial jobless claims has dropped to these low levels, we enter a recession. And this time it has dropped the most that we've ever seen in our lifetime, which tells us something's going on which is another indicator letting us know what is about to happen here. And we need to understand the central banking system has complete control over the economy. I mean, in the past they had control, but they've learned now how to control every aspect of the economy. Let me put this all into perspective. In 1970, when we came off the gold standard, we went on to the petrodollar. The central banks had the ability to create currency and take more control of the economy. They were able to bring it up and bring it down very easily. Sometimes they had trouble keeping the economy afloat and they actually had to bring the economy in, or the economy was brought down without them actually doing it. When we hit 2008, they had the ability at that point to control the economy but after 2008 they took on the ability to completely control the economy now you're probably thinking like what does he mean by this i thought they had control think about what they were able to get after 2008 they were able to get a free pass on to uh, on, on the ability to create as much currency as they wanted they also have the ability to purchase toxic real estate they also have the ability to buy stocks in the stock market and it's not just the fed it's the central banks around the world so they have the ability right now like they've never had before and with this newfound ability, they can keep the economy up much, much longer. In the past, there were certain times when the economy came down without them bringing it down because something, you know, was switched on someplace where people were like, okay, we just lost confidence and people started to realize this and all of a sudden the economy came down. Now, this can't happen, or maybe it can but they have better control over it because they have free reign to create currency out of thin air to monetize the entire system if they need to do so. To keep the stock market up, they now have the ability to purchase stocks. They have the plunder protection team. They have other countries purchasing stocks even if there are no buyers out there, they can buy it. And it doesn't matter if they have no, no currency, they'll just create currency. So keep that in mind when we talk about the collapse, when we talk about the economy coming down, they can keep this up for a longer period of time. But there will be a period of time where everything won't make sense. And they're very worried about that's what they're really worried about. The world going, okay, this really doesn't make sense anymore because there's a lot of people out of work, a lot of stores that are closed down, the GDP, unemployment numbers, nothing is making sense because when we look around, it, it all doesn't make sense. And the dollar is losing value every single day. We're creating more and more currency. People are switching over to the petro yuan or not using the dollar to trade in oil and things really don't make sense. We're starting to see all of this and what they keep doing is they keep covering it up. 
and it's very easy for them to do so once you take complete control of the system. Now, we're looking at all these indicators and they're just jumping off the chart. It's, it's just crazy right now. And most of these indicators are calling for a recession or that we're already in a recession. And we're seeing the same exact signals that we saw back in 2008, where Americans' confidence in the system, you know, is way, way up there. It's like 17-year highs. Well, we saw this back in 2008. And it doesn't, doesn't matter what the American people think because they're being lied to and they're in this illusion. And of course, they think everything is great. But everything around them could be crashing. But if the corporate media hides it all, the Fed hides it all, the government hides it all, nobody really knows until it's too late. This is what they like to do. Walmart now, they're going to be closing 260 Sam's Clubs. They're going to be firing thousands on the same day. Now, when we look at this, we know that Sam's Clubs have about 650 locations employing more than 100,000 people. And there's about 175 employees per store. That's a lot of people they're going to be laying off. We also understand that IBM right now is reassigning 30% of the staff in its service delivery business. And what they're saying is that as they do this, they're also going to be cutting around 10,000 jobs. So this number most likely will probably go up, but we can see right now that these this 30% most likely in the end they'll end up losing their jobs now again the companies are doing so well earnings are so great everything looks fantastic why do we see all of this happening because we understand that all of this is fake phony and false bank of america put out something that says listen there are a couple things that can pop the central bank bubble and they're starting to notice that there are strange anomalies in the economy and they listed four things that could pop the bubble. One, higher than expected inflation. Well, we already know that inflation is much higher than the Fed is reporting. Number two, lack of reflation, quantitative failure. Yeah, most likely. Number three, rising financial stability fears. Number four, protectionist politics. And once again, what we're looking at is more and more indicators showing us that something is going on here. Now, if we look at Barclays U.S. corporate credit spreads, we noticed we're at the point where we were in 2007. And we know what happened when we moved into 2008. And this is just another indicator letting us know that something is terribly wrong. Now, Marshall Swing He's been spot on with all his calls lately. And if Marshall is correct with his latest call, we have very little time to prepare. Now, what he's saying and what he's noticed is the following. And this is coming out of Silver Doctors. Now, he said, and this is going back in time to the beginning of January, by the way, that there's a war on gold. Now, we know this. We've seen a huge amount of contracts being thrown at gold and gold has been brought down. And he says that, yes, if you notice, there was a massive amount of contracts expended with the commercials made a pointed cone, sort of like the tin man's hat with a position reversal flag on top. He said around 75,000 contracts traded in 90 minutes in gold and in that space to the flag top, then retreated to exactly the price point from where they came. And he went on to say that it looks like we are headed to a fake New Year's full frontal assault on silver and somewhat gold as the last quarter corporate sales results come into reporting. Great fake economic news spells temporary disaster for the metals and it is always intentional, especially at option expirations. The metals lateral movement has all the looks of the same old tricks used to create depression in small speculators and manage money which tarnishes the allure of gold. So various players like China, Russia, central banks, the elite can get their fill before the world's economies are crashed. Now, he went on to say that he thinks the date of the economic crash is going to be July 20th, 2018. And I'm not saying this is the exact day. This is what he is looking at. And 
I'm going to tell you why he's looking at this date. And he's going to tell you why he's looking at this date. Ted Malak, who was rumored to be Trump's pick for ambassador to the EU, said the following, that the EU is going to collapse in 18 months. Now, Ted said this a while ago. He just didn't say it today. And it was reported in RT. Let me read the headline. In RT, the headline reads the fo- as the following. Euro could collapse in 18 months, predicts Trump's pick for EU ambassador. So we're looking at that right now. Now, this guy, Ted Malik, he knows a lot of the elite globalists. And he has a book, Davos, Aspen, and Yale, My Life Behind the Elite Curtain as a Global Sherpa. But when we look at this, we can see that, okay, he said that the euro is going to be crashing in 18 months. And we need to understand that in his book that he has, and in the article from RT, he references Joseph Stiglitz, who is yet another global elitist. And by the way, this guy, Joseph Stiglitz, well, he was the former chief economist and senior vice president of the World Bank. And he said the following, in 2010, the 2008 global financial crisis morphed into the Euro crisis. It has not abated. The 19 countries of Europe that share the Euro currency, the Eurozone, have been rocked by economic stagnation and debt crisis. Some countries have been in depression for years while the governing powers of the Eurozone have careened from emergency to emergency, most notably in Greece and many other countries. Joe Stiglitz is an expert in financial crisis, as are the top elites who got us into this mess. They know how to create them. They know what's happening. They're the insiders. Now, the individual Ted Malik said that the euro is going to be crashing in 18 months. Now, he said this on January 26, 2017. Now, if we take that date and we do a little bit of math, we go 547.5 days forward. It looks like he's talking about July 27th, 2018. But if you use, you know, each month is is a uh, a 30-day month, you get 540 days. And that gives us a date of July 20th. But what's very interesting about these two dates... July 20th and July 27th is that they are both on a Friday and we discussed this before that the central banking system the elite the globalists they like to push their agendas especially when it has to do with banking on Fridays because during the weekend they can close things down people really don't notice these things This happened in Cyprus, it happened in Greece, it happened in India, it happened in many countries where they closed the banking system down on Friday. There's a little, you know, something that's reported out in the corporate media and they say everything's fine, don't worry about it, it'll reopen on Monday. And then when Monday comes, they said, oh no, we have to keep it closed because we still have problems. It'll only be a couple more days. And this way, people are not worried. They knew it was going to be closed on the weekend and they give it buys them time. And what he's saying here is that this information was blurted out and they always like to tell you when things are going to happen 18 months ago. And here we are coming into 2018 and we have to remember, remember the economist magazine when they said things are going to be changing in 2018 and here we are in 2018 so i'm not saying this is the exact date it's just very interesting that he's pointing this out he's noticing the pattern with gold and silver and if we did we did notice and we reported on this many times when there were thousands upon thousands of contracts being thrown at gold you know in the fall of 2017 bringing the price down and we know that china russia india they, they all been 
you know, accumulating a huge amount of gold. We know that the central banks have been accumulating gold. We know there was a gold heist of $11 million. And we know that the walls are closing in around the elite right now. And again, they want to control everything as it comes down. They leave nothing to chance. And now they have complete control of the system. All they need is something to blame it on. That's it. So this could be a possibility that this is the time frame of when this system's coming down. Because we know it's impossible to sustain. No matter what we see happening, the, the debt is going to continually move up. 20 trillion, 25 trillion. I mean, the pattern is there. It just can't come down, you know, all of a sudden. The global debt has hit new record highs. The people of the United States and around the world, their debt levels are so high, it's ridiculous. And all these indicators that we've been seeing, the entire system's just ripping itself apart. And of course, this is all behind the scenes. What they want you to see is that everything is great. They do this up to the very end. And this is why you need to be ready and prepared because they have plans and the plans don't include you or me or anyone else. It includes them. And their plans are to restart the system, make a lot of money off the crash, and who cares what happens to the people? This is how they think. And we can see there's a rush net right now of who can get there first, who can control it, and who has the upper hand, the central bank or the Trump administration. And that's what's happening right now. And this is why Trump has Andrew Jackson hanging in his office. Because he's going to make a move on the central bank when it's the time is right. And I think we're approaching that time very, very quickly. And this is why you need to be ready and prepared for what is coming. Because, you know, when it hits, it's going to hit. If it's a soft landing, it's still going to hit. If it's a hard landing, you better be ready. If it's a soft landing, you know, you might be able to get by, but thank God you have the supplies because we're going to see inflation. Uh, things are going to be hard to get. So we can see no matter which way we look at it, you're going to have to be ready. And a lot of people are not going to be ready and they're going to be very upset. They're going to be very angry. They're not going to know what's going on. And this is going to piss a lot of people off. And I think this is why Trump has been trying to make this as soft of a landing as possible. But I mean, once again, we're coming off the system that's built up on debt. It's all a lie. And it's going to be very difficult for a lot of people.